November 22, 1963, a day that sent shockwaves around the globe, the day President John F. Kennedy was assassinated. A day etched into the annals of history, its echoes reverberating through decades. The crisp, clear morning began like any other. President Kennedy, ever the charismatic leader, departed from Fort Worth, Texas with his wife Jackie by his side. Their destination? Dallas. The city buzzed with anticipation, the air thick with expectation, as thousands lined the streets, eager to catch a glimpse of their beloved leader. As the presidential motorcade turned onto Elm Street in Dealey Plaza, the crowd cheered, their voices rising into a crescendo. The Kennedys, bathed in the Texas sun, waved back, their smiles as radiant as the day. Little did they know, these moments of joy would soon be shattered. From the sixth floor of the Texas School Book Depository, a former U.S. Marine named Lee Harvey Oswald took aim. The first shot rang out followed by two more in quick succession. The cheers turned into gasps, the smiles into expressions of horror. Kennedy slumped in his car, fatally wounded. The world, it seemed, held its breath. In the chaos that ensued, the motorcade sped away, racing towards Parkland Memorial Hospital. But it was too late. At 1 p.m., President John F. Kennedy was pronounced dead, his life cut short in a moment of inexplicable violence. The news spread like wildfire, from Dallas to distant corners of the world. From the bustling streets of New York to the quiet villages of Africa, a collective gasp echoed, a sense of disbelief permeating through nations and generations. As the world stood still, a nation mourned the loss of its leader. And so, the day that started like any other had become a day that would forever be remembered as the day that shook the world. The echoes of those fatal shots in Dealey Plaza continue to reverberate, a chilling reminder of a moment that changed the course of history. The man behind the trigger, Lee Harvey Oswald, a figure as enigmatic as the events of that day. Born in New Orleans in 1939, Oswald's early life was marked by turbulence. His father died before he was born, and his mother constantly moved him and his two older siblings around. Oswald dropped out of school at the tender age of 17 and joined the U.S. Marines. Here he showed an aptitude for marksmanship, a skill that would later become chillingly significant. In 1959, Oswald took a dramatic turn. He defected to the Soviet Union, a shocking move during the height of the Cold War. He worked in Minsk, married, and had a child. Yet, life in the Soviet Union didn't turn out as Oswald had imagined. He grew disillusioned, and in 1962, he returned to the U.S. with his family. Once back, Oswald's life remained unsettled. He moved frequently, held a series of low-paying jobs, and had a volatile marriage. He also developed a keen interest in political activism, particularly related to Cuba and the Soviet Union. His radical political beliefs, combined with his military training, would set him on a collision course with history. In early 1963, Oswald purchased a mail-order rifle. Later that year he would use this weapon to change the course of American history. On November 22nd from the sixth floor window of the Texas School Book Depository, Oswald took aim and fired. The rest, as they say, is history. Oswald was captured but his life was cut short when he was shot and killed by a nightclub owner named Jack Ruby. Oswald's motivations, his actions and his connections have been the subject of intense scrutiny and speculation. Despite numerous investigations concluding that Oswald acted alone, many still question if he was part of a larger conspiracy. Oswald's actions ignited a firestorm of conspiracy theories that continue to burn to this day. In the turmoil following the assassination, Vice President Lyndon B. Johnson was sworn in as president, a nation in shock. As the dust settled on that fateful day in November, the United States of America found itself in the grip of disbelief and despair. The vibrant and dynamic leader John F. Kennedy was no more, and the nation was in mourning. Just hours after the assassination, Vice President Lyndon B. Johnson was hastily sworn in as president aboard the presidential aircraft Air Force One. The gravity of the situation was palpable, as Johnson assumed the mantle of leadership amidst a deepening crisis. In the wake of this shocking event, the law enforcement agencies sprang into action. Lee Harvey Oswald, a former U.S. Marine with a complex background including defection to the Soviet Union, was swiftly apprehended. Identified as the shooter from the Texas School Book Depository, he became the prime suspect. However, the story took a bizarre turn when just two days later, Oswald was gunned down live on national television. The man behind the trigger was Jack Ruby, a Dallas nightclub owner. His motives remain a subject of debate and speculation to this day. The nation watched in horror as the dramatic events unfolded. The assassination of a beloved president, the swift transition of power, 
the capture of the alleged assassin and his subsequent murder, it all seemed surreal. The emotions were raw, and the grief was profound. The American people were grappling with the harsh reality of their changed world. Yet, amidst the shock and sorrow, the nation was forced to move forward. The wheels of governance could not halt, and the world could not wait. Lyndon B. Johnson, now at the helm, faced the daunting task of uniting a nation in mourning and steering it through the troubled waters of the Cold War era. A new chapter in American history had begun, one marked by uncertainty and grief. In the wake of the tragedy, a thorough investigation was launched to uncover the truth behind the assassination. The task of unraveling the threads of this monumental event fell on the shoulders of the Warren Commission. Named after its chairman, Chief Justice Earl Warren, this investigative body was assembled by President Lyndon B. Johnson just seven days after Kennedy's death. The commission was tasked with the daunting job of combing through the details of that fateful day in Dallas, and its subsequent report would become one of the most controversial documents in modern American history. After nearly 10 months of tireless investigation, the Warren Commission published its findings. The conclusion was clear, albeit contentious. Lee Harvey Oswald, according to the commission, had acted alone. The report stated that Oswald, from his perch in the Texas School Book Depository, fired three shots, with two striking Kennedy. They found no evidence of a conspiracy, no second gunman, no shadowy organization pulling the strings from the darkness. But the Warren Commission's report was met with skepticism from the very beginning. Critics argued that the investigation was rushed and incomplete. Some pointed to inconsistencies in the evidence, to the trajectory of the bullets, to the mysterious circumstances surrounding Oswald's own death just two days after Kennedy's assassination. These critics suggested that the truth was being concealed, that there was more to the story than what the Warren Commission's report was telling us. The controversy surrounding the Warren Commission's findings ignited a spark that still burns brightly today. Over 50 years have passed since the assassination of John F. Kennedy, yet the debate rages on. Books have been written, documentaries have been filmed, and countless hours have been spent poring over the details of that tragic day in November of 1963. Despite the findings of the Warren Commission, many continue to question its conclusions. The story of the Kennedy assassination, it seems, is a book that refuses to be closed. It's a mystery that continues to captivate and confound, a testament to the enduring power of unanswered questions. In the shadows of the official narrative, a multitude of conspiracy theories have taken root. Some are widely debunked, others stubbornly persist but all contribute to the enduring mystery surrounding the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. Among the most popular is the Grassy Knoll theory. This theory posits that a second shooter was lying in wait on a grassy hill in Dealey Plaza and fired the fatal shot. Conspiracy theorists point to witnesses who claim to hear shots coming from that direction, and the infamous Zapruder film that some argue shows Kennedy's head moving in a way consistent with a shot from the front, not the rear where Oswald was positioned. Then, there's the mob involvement theory. This one suggests that the mafia, disgruntled by Kennedy's crackdown on organized crime, orchestrated the assassination. Some proponents of this theory point to Jack Ruby's killing of Oswald as evidence, suggesting Ruby, a nightclub owner with alleged mob ties, was silencing Oswald on the mob's behalf. Finally, the second shooter theory. This suggests Oswald didn't act alone, that there was a second gunman involved in the assassination. This theory gained traction due to perceived anomalies in the bullet trajectories and the difficulty Oswald would have faced in firing three shots in such quick succession with his bolt-action rifle. And these are just a few of the theories. There are countless others suggesting involvement from everyone from the CIA to Fidel Castro. Each theory, each question adds another layer to the enigma that is the Kennedy assassination. The truth of what happened that day in Dallas may be elusive, surrounded by a fog of speculation and intrigue, Yet regardless of where the truth lies, the fascination with these conspiracy theories remains. They continue to captivate us, drawing us into the labyrinth of mystery that surrounds one of the most shocking events in American history. Despite his untimely death, JFK's legacy continues to shape America. John F. Kennedy, the 35th President of the United States, left an indelible imprint on the nation's history, despite his short tenure. His presidency, though marred by the Cold War's tensions, was marked by significant strides in various areas. Under Kennedy's leadership, America took giant leaps forward. 
His commitment to the space race led to the Apollo program, setting the stage for America's first moon landing. His vision of a new frontier captured the imagination of the nation, promising advances in science, technology, and social reform. Kennedy's presidency was characterized by his dedication to civil rights. He championed equal rights for all, regardless of race or color, pushing for legislation that paved the way for the Civil Rights Act of 1964. His efforts didn't stop there. He also advocated for equal pay for equal work, a principle that continues to guide discussions about workplace equality today. But perhaps what most remember about Kennedy was his charisma and eloquence. His speeches, filled with hope and optimism, inspired a generation. His call to ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country, in his inaugural address, still echoes in the hearts of Americans. JFK's presidency, however short, was a period of intense change and progress. His policies and ideals shaped the nation and his influence can still be felt today. His death may have been tragic but his life and work were anything but. He was a beacon of hope and progress, a symbol of what America could be. The flame of JFK's legacy continues to burn, a beacon in the annals of American history. More than six decades later the Kennedy assassination continues to captivate and puzzle. The events of November 22, 1963, have been turned over, analyzed and debated countless times, yet they still hold a bewitching charm that keeps us coming back for more. Why does this particular event in history still grip us so tightly? Perhaps it's the sheer audacity of the act, the killing of a sitting U.S. president in broad daylight, or maybe it's the charismatic figure of JFK himself, a man whose potential was cut down in his prime. The Kennedy assassination also happened during a time of great turmoil and change in the United States. The Cold War was at its height, and the nation was embroiled in significant events like the Cuban Missile Crisis. This backdrop of tension and uncertainty only adds to the intrigue surrounding the event. Then there are the unanswered questions. Despite numerous investigations the case is far from closed in the public's mind. Doubts continue to swirl around Lee Harvey Oswald. Did he really act alone or was he part of a larger conspiracy? And what about Jack Ruby, the man who killed Oswald? What were his motives and did he have any connections to the assassination? These questions and many others keep the debate alive and fuel our fascination with the Kennedy assassination. Every new piece of information, every fresh perspective, only seems to deepen the mystery, rather than solve it. The Kennedy assassination is more than just a historical event. It's a symbol of a lost innocence, a turning point in American history, and a mystery that continues to captivate us. As we continue to seek answers and understand the full implications of that fateful day, we're reminded of the fragility of life, the unpredictability of history, and the enduring power of a single moment to shape a nation's destiny. The Kennedy assassination, a moment in history that continues to echo through the ages. The assassination of JFK, a tragic moment that forever changed the course of American history. We've delved deep into the events leading up to that fateful day in November 1963, the impact of Lee Harvey Oswald's actions, and the aftermath that shook the nation to its core. We've explored the investigations carried out, the conclusions they reached, and the many conspiracy theories that emerged in their wake. The official narrative tells us that Oswald acted alone, but as we've seen, there are many who question this verdict, and the mystery endures. We've also reflected on the legacy of JFK, a president whose time in office was marked by Cold War tensions and significant events like the Cuban Missile Crisis. His assassination not only marked the end of his presidency, but also ushered in a new era of uncertainty and change. The enduring mystery surrounding JFK's assassination continues to captivate our collective imagination. Despite the passage of over six decades we still find ourselves asking the same questions, seeking new answers, and grappling with the complexities of this pivotal moment in history. Through it all, one thing remains clear. The assassination of John F. Kennedy was more than just an individual tragedy. It was a moment that forever altered the trajectory of a nation, leaving an indelible mark on the pages of American history. Thank you for joining us on this journey through history. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, History Facts, for more videos like this. Until next time, keep exploring the past.